Hi, this is Kate All from Simple Pin Media, and you are listening to the Eat Blog Talk podcast. Hey, food bloggers, are you ready to accomplish your 2023 goals faster than you ever thought possible? If you are nodding your head yes right now, the Eat Blog Talk Mastermind program might be a great fit for you. We are now accepting applications for 2023, and I will let you in on a little secret. If you sign up before the end of November 2022, you can lock in at the current pricing. Go to eblogtalk.com forward slash mastermind for more information and to apply. Here is current mastermind member Kim from kickassbaker.com talking about one of the biggest benefits she has received from being inside the group. And I think just that transparency and willingness to be open and sharing for the pure benefit of somebody else's success has been a big surprise to me. For me, I that's a big part of like who I am too, is I'm very much interested in helping other people succeed, but it's been like very equal, you know, like there's just a very equal amount of giving and taking, sharing and sharing and sharing for other success. And other people are so willing to share what has worked for them purely to help other people succeed. Hello, food bloggers. Welcome to Eat Blog Talk, the podcast for food bloggers looking for the value and the confidence that will move the needle forward in their businesses. This episode is sponsored by Rank IQ. I am your host, Megan Porta, and you are listening to episode number 366. I have Kate all with me from Simple Pin Media. She's going to talk to us about the state of Pinterest as it relates to food bloggers. Kate all is the founder of Simple Pin Media. She has been helping businesses discover, learn, and master Pinterest marketing for over seven years. She combines the data learned from working with clients, education from Pinterest, and her knowledge of the platform to help people expand the reach of their business using Pinterest. Her mantra is to keep it simple, be authentic, and pin with purpose. In addition to hosting her own show, Simple Pin Podcast. Kate has been interviewed on a number of podcasts, including The Jasmine Star Show, Spa Marketing Made Easy, Proof to Product, and Serve Scale Soar, to name a few. Kate, it is such a pleasure to have you back on eBlog Talk. Thank you so much for being here today. Yeah, I'm so excited to catch up with you. I know there's so much to talk about. Yes, there is. Okay, do we have a fun, another fun fact to share before we dig into it? Who fun fact about me. Yes, I actually am obsessed right now with boba tea, which is so funny. Like I have to actually, I have to like talk myself out of not buying it because it's so good. But I know some people have like a visceral reaction to it because they think it's gross because there's tapioca in it. Right. It's chunky, right? Yes, totally. I think that's why I haven't tried it, to be honest with you. I know a lot of people who are really loving it, but I'm like, ooh, the liquid and chunky coming. Yeah. yeah. I don't know how I would deal with that. (laughs) (laughs) I know. And I have a friend who she has family in Taiwan and, you know, boba tea originated over there. And so she will only get the milk tea without the tapioca or the jellies. She's like, I can't do it. I can't, I can't handle it. And I'm like, that's the part that I love about the most. It's really crazy. All right. Well, good to know that about you. We've learned some fun (laughs) facts about you over the years. I know, right? The puzzles, all the things. The garbage. I don't know why I remember that, but the garbage. You like garbage day. I love garbage day. It's like my (laughs) favorite day of the week. And if my kids, I will go out there to the garbage and be like, is this thing full? Because it's not full. (laughs) We're not getting the most out of it. Let's get rid of some more crap. Oh, I hope everyone enjoyed our recap of all of Kate's fun facts. That was (laughs) that was unexpected, but awesome. Love to learn just random stuff about you. Okay, we have a lot to talk about. We're going to talk about Pinterest, and you are like the Pinterest guru that I know a lot of food bloggers go to for their, you know, as their main resource for Pinterest. So let's just start with a general kind of catch up. Where is Pinterest at now? I would just love to get your thoughts. Yeah, I would say Pinterest has changed so much from the pandemic to now. We really had like this huge wave of the surge of people really using Pinterest at the start of the pandemic and then really a big loss over 21 and half of 22 of users. And in that time too, as well, as we saw the rise of TikTok, it's like Pinterest really wanted to capture a lot of that traffic, right? Like they wanted to capture a lot of that momentum. So that's when they introduced idea pins. And then they introduced Pinterest TV, which is a little bit of a different spin than something like an IG TV or an IG live. And then really wanted to focus on trying to keep people on the platform longer. But 
what's interesting is that Pinterest has a different ecosystem than every single other platform out there. And pinners are really primed to use it in a certain way. So there was some pushback on these things that didn't have links and some frustrations. And so we really have had to figure out, and I'll also state too, this is probably the other big change, is that Pinterest CEO and founder, one of the founders stepped away from the company completely, and then the other founder stepped down to be the head of the board and let Bill Reddy He was a former CEO of PayPal, Google Commerce, Venmo. He worked at Venmo. Really, this new CEO take the lead to create Pinterest to be America's shopping mall. So we have a lot of changes when it comes to e-commerce, a lot of changes when keeping people on the platform longer. And at times, it's felt a little bit like, what's what's happening here? But, you know, we've we've seemed to adapt and see where 2023 will be interesting. We said 2022 was kind of like our reckoning year, like what's going to happen on Pinterest. And I think 2023, we'll start to see some good lift on these changes. Okay. So that's interesting that the ownership changed, I guess. Maybe I had heard that, but I didn't retain it. America's shopping mall. Interesting. I think that's such a huge change from what it was previously, right? Yeah. Yeah, a hundred percent. And I think one of the things that's been interesting to watch about this whole thing is that Pinterest like ecosystem, if you will, of going to Pinterest, finding what you like, asking questions, not not following people like you would on Instagram or even TikTok, that still remains. Like we still have that core of who they are. And we still have the core of search, meaning around keywords and images, things like that. It's just we have different formats. It's like we have a diversified platform of how to get to the solution that the pinner wants, which open up opens up more doors, I think, for multiple businesses to be seen by lots of different pinners. So it's where we had one way before, which was one standard pin or a video pin. It's like now we have multiple ways of connecting with a person who might be a future email reader or audience member or whatever it is that you are trying to use Pinterest to attract people for. Do you see this as opportunity for food bloggers? I mean, you just, obviously you just said like multiple options for people seeing your content. So I can just see that as positive. Is there any negative to this for food bloggers? Yeah, I think I'm always going to spin things as positive. So I'll just put that out there right now. <laughs> I would say for a seasoned older food blogger who's probably used Pinterest for a long time, these changes are very frustrating and feel very discombobulating. For our newer food bloggers who have started their business in 2020, 2021, they are seeing it much differently as there is a lot more opportunity for them. This is the one pathway where they know this is where people look for recipes. This is where people look for ideas. And they know that it's really important to leverage. So we have a little bit of the old, which they know what they used to have and are sad they don't have it anymore, meaning traffic. And then the new, which are saying, this is getting me more traffic than all the other platforms. Why would I not use this? So we're at a little bit of an impasse with two different views for food bloggers. Yeah. And I have a slightly different perspective. I'm an like quote older blogger too. And I'm, I feel like I've just been through so much, not with Pinterest alone, but just in general, like as a food blogger, that I just feel unshaken, like, oh, well, (laughs) I mean, if, you know, things are always changing, there's nothing is ever going to stay the same, Pinterest included. So I feel like, whatever, we're going to roll with this. I'm used to it. And I feel like newer bloggers are like, wait, wait, I started in 2021. And it was a little different than, you know, like, they're kind of like, what's Mm -hmm. going on. So that's kind of my perspective. So it's interesting to hear you say that, and I'm sure there are a crew of older bloggers who are like, frustrated. Mm -hmm. Well, and I love your perspective. I think it's, I think it's the right perspective to, to say like, because, you know, you think about any business owner and the things that they go through with the ups and the downs. Like I think about business owners that they were so focused on the phone book. Right. And then the phone book started (laughs) to go away and we had the internet. It was like how discombobulating for them, you know? Yeah, exactly. Okay. I love that. Just getting different perspectives and you work with a lot of people on, uh, you know, just digging into Pinterest platforms. So love to hear all of that. Now, when this episode publishes, it will be nearing the end of Q4. So what do we need to know about Pinterest as we wrap up Q4 and head into a new year? 
Yeah, for for food creators, Q4 really is the time to get the maximum amount of exposure for your content, most likely. Now, there's some food creators that might be more in the healthy food niche. They are going to get more play for their content in January and even half of February. So one of the things that you want to think about when you look at any year, when you approach it, is you want to look back at the previous year to look at what your traffic patterns are. So that allows you to get a holistic view of the year to say, when do I need to push on the gas a little bit more? Meaning maybe I'm going to pin a little bit more, do some more idea pins, do a little more short form video, or where I can pull off a little bit. And I know this is not going to be my time to get a lot of traffic. So I'm okay stepping back and maybe focusing more on you know, less pins or trying something different or getting more experimental. So I would say that's number one. Number two is to refresh your idea of why you use Pinterest. I think this is important for any business owner to ask themselves why they're using any platform for their marketing, especially Pinterest for food bloggers, because they want to be centered on this thing that says, okay, this is why I use Pinterest. This is how I'm going to stay committed to it, which I think creates what you feel is that unshaken feeling because you know why you're using it and why you're investing in it. And then I think the third part is to set yourself up to embrace some changes or try something new in 2023, whether that is, I'll share an example for us. This last July, I had the idea to start testing things just to test them, right? Just because I wanted to not, I wanted to challenge myself, basically not to believe my own advice over the years. Like, (laughs) could I challenge myself to, to really turn it on, turn it on its side? And so I told my social media manager who I work with, I said, let's in August pin just 20 pins a day. Let's just grab whatever and see, does that make a difference? Are are we going to be in trouble? Are we going to decrease? Are we going to, and what's it look like? And August for us is a a lower time. So it was easier to test with it. We noticed a little bit of change, not a lot. And so I said, okay, let's go the extreme. Let's in September only do idea pins Mm -hmm. two a week. Let's see what happens. My traffic went down significantly, but my impressions and my saves went up. And I was like, but traffic is important to me because I use Pinterest to grow my email list. So it's like, let's find a middle ground with both of these now. So if you have a month where you can play around with your own numbers, that's a good thing to set yourself up for in 2023. And I think when you plan for it, you can approach it differently than when you see like, this is what happens to me. And I know it happens to other people. I see somebody post in a Facebook group or a thread somewhere and they talk about this amazing result they've had with Pinterest and I immediately want to try it. Well, that kind of bumps me off my system a little bit. You can try it, but plan for it so you can really get true accurate stats and know if it works for you or if it doesn't work for you. So those are the three things I would suggest in 2023. I love experimenting. I love just wrapping my head around something like, okay, I need to try like exactly what you did in August and September. So when you say experiment, do you think it's smart to like look at what has been working? Like maybe it's been idea pins have been working really well. So like digging into that more or trying something that isn't working, how, which way do we go? You know? Yeah. That, that, I think that's all centered on your why of Pinterest. So I look at Pinterest as a traffic driver to grow my email list. So my people that are coming from Pinterest are really in the how to's. They're really trying to figure out how to make Pinterest work for them. And they want some granular topics, right? So then if I know that I want to grow my email list and the one way to do that is by getting clicks. And then the secondary way is through saves. I take the approach of, I want to try something that's going to elevate those and I want to try to think kind of outside the box, like I could try idea pins. So if I look at idea pins and I look at my stats, I can look at the ones that are most popular, which ones lead to the most follows and the most profile visits. So you can see those stats in Pinterest now, which is actually super helpful. So then if I see I have an idea pin that has a really great topic that leads to profile visits, and then, you know, they also follows that means I'm getting them to a point where I know I could create a conversion. So I think for me, it's all about why I'm using it. And sometimes I think it's easy too to get caught up in some vanity metrics 
where I want to grow a particular impressions or monthly viewers, but those don't really align with my goal. So I would say you could test things that might not, you know, some people approach like scheduling tools. They'll say, I am really burnt out on a scheduling tool. Let me see if it works for me to get more traffic if I don't use one. Or maybe it's something along those lines. But I I definitely will say that I will connect it with my conversion. And then anything goes if it leads to that. Okay, that makes sense. And there are so many ways to experiment. You mentioned scheduling tools. You could experiment with that. You could experiment with different types of pins, whether it's like a hero shot or process shot, you know, like there's so many different ways with pins because there's visual components and there's also like so many different ways to get your content on Pinterest. So I feel like there's like this endless equation that you could tap into. Which I think is really important for you to say, like, I love that you brought that up because that is the trap I think I see people falling into is when we look at what somebody else has posted as an experiment, which inherently is not bad. That's really good. We want ideas from other people. What you, The filter you always need to put on that is let's evaluate their audience, their goals, their keywords, their images, because those pieces all play a very distinct role. And you can't take this, I, you know, you can't take this sweeping idea of, let's say, a scheduling tool and say, I'm going to turn off all my scheduling because person A over here said they did that and their traffic grew by 50%. Well, then you come over here and you try doing it and you say, man, that didn't work for me. Like, I'm so frustrated. But when you put the factors side by side, you might see that they have they might have a factor that's totally different than you. They might be targeting a different keyword. I've often said in the past that there are some food creators that they're very like bon appetit and their recipes take a long time. And they are, you know, you have to go to Whole Foods and spend $1 million on like some (laughs) foreign spice, right? Well, then you can't lay that side by side or side by side in everyday cook, you're not going to get the same results because an everyday cook has approachable ingredients. You can go to any supermarket. You can do a meal for less than $10. And right now in our current environment, that is going to win out because we're in a recession, right? And so people are pinching their dollars. They might not go to Whole Foods, but they might save that really fancy content for later because it's aspirational. It's not something that's approachable of the everyday. So that's why I say like when you see those things of somebody else getting a result from their test, always weigh against who they're targeting versus who you're targeting. Oh, that's powerful. Yeah. So we're never comparing apples to apples ever because nobody is you and you're always Mm -hmm. comparing to, there are so many variables really. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. So can we talk about repurposing content? Because I know that can be a struggle for food bloggers who can't post new content, you know, every day and sometimes not even every week. So what are your thoughts about repurposing? Yeah, I'll, I hate to start with the negative because I just said I was positive, <laughs> but I'll say this. The negative that I see is really just taking a reel and posting it on Pinterest as an idea pin. You can definitely take the concept of your reel and definitely download it. You want to obviously strip all the watermark stuff and then upload it directly to idea pins. You know who I love for food inspiration is entertaining with Beth. I think she does an excellent job at repurposing. She's YouTube is her first primary platform. Pinterest is her second. And then, you know, she has Instagram too. I love going to her Pinterest page to see how she's repurposing her food content. And it's very much those shorter form videos, the step-by-steps, but it's so, it leaves you wanting more, I guess. And I think if you're going to repurpose something, you have to remember that the pinner is in a delight and surprise, right? Like delight and surprise me. I don't know who you are. I have no connection with you, which I think the caution of repurposing from something like Instagram or TikTok is we approach those platforms with the assumption that people have chosen to follow us and they know us. Whereas on Pinterest, they don't know us. And frankly, they kind of don't care, right? But they really care about your recipe. 
And they're asking the question, can I make this? Is this doable? Do I like how this person is creating these recipes? You know, and yeah, I want to connect with them. So when you think of repurposing before you take something from Instagram, because what I see is a lot of food bloggers, they, they're crushing on Instagram. They're amazing. But before you take something and pull it over, just see, is this good content for idea pins? And that's where we see reels being able to be repurposed on Pinterest is through idea pins or very short form, less than 30 second videos. If you had to describe the difference between Instagram reels and idea pins, what would you say is the Mm. biggest difference? I would say the biggest difference is, well, one, if we have like the, you know, like the talking or the overlay or, you know, you have this, I don't know how to describe it, but like the ticket, the dancing, the dancey stuff. We don't want that on Pinterest (laughs) at all. But when it comes to reels, I really think that sometimes it can be this, sometimes it could be behind the scenes, which I think you could also put on Pinterest too. I guess I would say it would have to do, the differences really have to do with the type of content. And also I would say idea pins are slide based. So you can put multiple slides. So it's like a hybrid of a story and a reel is an Mm -hmm. idea pin. It's kind of like you merge those two together. Whereas a reel, you know, is just your 60 seconds, 120 seconds kind of thing. You want to download that and break that up into slides on the idea pin. And then it lives forever, unlike a story that has to be saved to a highlight. Taking just a quick break, food bloggers, to chat about my favorite keyword research tool that I am finding so much success with with my own food blog. Rank IQ is a custom keyword library packed with keywords that are easy to rank for and that also have high search volume. With the uncertainty that comes along with core updates, algorithm changes, and seasonal lulls, food bloggers need to tap into steady traffic that is going to grow over time. Here are a few of my favorite things about Rank IQ. One, I know exactly how fast something will rank based on the competition score and the time to rank score. Two, it saves me a ton of time. I can typically get a new post kicked out in two hours or less. Three, the keyword research tool provides a ton of great ideas for content that will support my existing recipes. Four, I'm no longer guessing about how successful a keyword will be before spending hours writing about it. Go to rankiq.com to get started. Now back to the episode. Do you have a personal preference as far as like what kind of titles you like to see on food co- content creator idea mm-hmm. idea pins? Yeah, when it comes to idea pins for food creators, what I really love is that opening slide that very much resembles like your regular standard pin. It just tells the person exactly what it is because the pinner doesn't read. Like they're, even when I'm on Instagram and I see something that's a reel, like I look below sometimes to get more context, whereas pinners don't read. So you have to understand that your first slide is really going to be like, this is what it is. And then I like the hybrid of video and then static images as well. So if somebody is making like a very simple cocktail, it's like you have, here's an old fashioned step one, step two, step three, step four. Those can be some video, maybe showing like a shaking or burning of the little like orange peel or whatever. And then at the end, there can be the call to action to follow or learn more. And I like those general formats of the both video and static images, but showing the step by step, it's like, I do you remember when Facebook blew up with all those like tasty style oh, videos? Yes, yes. Yes, yeah, exactly. So it's a little bit like we, we see some of that really do well on Pinterest when you just really have a, a picture of the bowl and the, some of the video in the step by step. It's like that, that works well. Yeah. And so that could become an experiment too, just doing the hybrid yeah. of static and video and movement and still. That makes Mm -hmm. it really interesting, I think, really unique when you can kind of add a lot of different components in there. And you know who, so there's a food blogger couple in my mastermind group, Brittany and Terrence from the plant power couple. They are Mm. crushing it on Pinterest right now. They're making really just interesting idea pins that are really inspiring to the rest of us in the group. And I've been sharing their account with as many people as I can because I just love it. Like they do exactly what you said. They put video in. Some of it is of them making the food. Some of it is actually like of them, their person. And some Mm. of it is just like still like 
images. So if any of you want to be inspired, go check out their account. Too. Yeah, I was just looking for it too. And I think that's when you say that too, like going to Pinterest, go to Pinterest to see what things look like. Like if you, I think one of the greatest traps for any food creator or any content creator is we're on our computer all the time, right? Like we're creating idea pins sometimes on our computer, maybe in Canva. And then we're also, you know, some people even you can, I think you can upload it's better to upload on mobile because you get all the features on mobile, obviously, but a lot of people are creating and they're only seeing these images on these huge screens, or they're not going at looking at other people's profiles like you just talked about, or even engaging with the platform because they're using the scheduling tool. Honestly, an experiment for somebody would be like, just use the actual mm. platform 10 minutes a day. That's it. Yes. Like just play around with it. We forget to go in there as a user once in a while, right? We get so caught up in like, I have to go on my phone and create this idea pen and get it out into the world. And then we leave and we don't go back to actually consume the content. So I think that's powerful right there. It's so simple. Just, yeah, set a timer, spend 10 minutes in there and see if anything changes. I might try mm -hmm. that experiment. That's fun for me to go into Pinterest and look around. So and to search your keywords too, search your name, mm -hmm. search your keywords, see what's coming up. And you know, what's also fascinating is how much the app has changed. Because when idea pins came out, they had the bubbles at the top, where you would first see idea pins that resembled a lot of Instagram. Yeah. Those are gone now. And so idea pins are very much folded into the regular smart feed experience and the regular search experience. So we have this cool thing where your, your home feed, your smart feed, which is supposed to be designed to fit everything you like, you save, you search, you follow, you're interested in. That's a combination now of standard pins, video pins, Pinterest ads, and idea pins. So you have this conglomeration of a lot of different pin formats. And if you think about what yours looks like, Think about what your end users might look like. And if they're searching for particular topics, your hope is you want to end up in their smart feed. Have you experimented with the new Pinterest trends much? I know it was very recently new, mm -hmm. at least for me. Yes, I love it. Like I, I have to give Pinterest mad props for getting better at analytics and getting better at trends and also doing cross country in their trends because you know it's open to the UK, Canada, and the US right now. But in the beginning, it was just US. So it left our Canadian friends and our UK friends uh, who are the second biggest, third biggest users with not a lot of tools. And now they just keep getting better and better. So I oh, highly recommend anybody use it. It's such a great tool. Do you have any tips for how to use it? I, I mean, it's new and different. It looks amazing. But I go in and I'm like, well, it's so different that I really don't know where to start. I know, right? So I would say one of the biggest things is if I am going to think about creating future content, or let's say, let's take the play around approach. I like to search my most popular topics to see when they are getting the most traffic. So when I talked about at the beginning, like approaching 2023 with like knowing your year, this will help you see when the search volume of these particular terms are highest. I like that because it really allows me to see if my stuff is truly aligning with that there, I actually like the boards ideas. In fact, I have it. I want to pull it up on my computer as we're talking, because I think it is one of the coolest things to look at the boards that people are pinning to. They'll give you like examples of topics. So you can go in and you can see top trends for the US. I like that, especially if you're, if you are like content depleted, I don't know if that's a good word to use, <laughs> but you know, you have to come up with a lot of ideas. And sometimes this is a great way to crowdsource ideas just by looking at top trends. And then you can go into discovering trends by dates, by interest, keywords, age, gender. There's so much new stuff. It's actually like, I haven't even played around with it as much as I probably should have, but it's, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, it looks, in I mean, intense in a good way. It looks like you could get really in depth and maybe I should just set aside a couple of hours in the next few days just to kind of sort through here and get to know it a little bit because it looks mm -hmm. amazing. Yeah, and even changing, like you said, like top 
you know, I'm looking at it right now. I just clicked on top yearly trends and these are trends of the high search volume, which one of the biggest complaints, right? Especially for any type of content creator wanting to maximize SEO is that Pinterest doesn't have the equivalent of like a keyword ad search, like a Google ad search or not an ad search, but you know, the word search where you can see, is it Google search console? Yeah. Uh, right. Yep. Yeah. So people would complain like Pinterest doesn't have the equivalent. You really just had like the search bar on Pinterest and the guided search bubbles. Well, this tool is really leveling up to get better and better with these yearly trends or the search volume. I mean, I'm even looking right now, the top three in mine are like dinner ideas, dinner recipes, easy dinner recipes, chicken recipes. I mean, and then for some reason I have a lot of nails, which I know nails are very popular on Pinterest. People search them all the time, but you know, there's a lot of things that you can see in there that I think you could take advantage of. I don't think I've ever searched nails on Pinterest before. I must be oh, I haven't either. in the minority I there. <laughs> no, I like I pretty think... nails, but never thought to do it on Pinterest. That's funny. I know it's like everywhere. It's crazy. All right. Well, yeah, I see nails come up and then, but yeah, like lots of opportunity for food, soup recipes, chili recipes, which I have a lot of, another soup, apple crisp. So this is worthwhile. It's worthwhile to just go through here and check it out, I think. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. And there's the Pinterest predictions that they'll link to a ton. I'm assuming that when this airs, we'll have Pinterest predictions for 2023. One thing to note about it is that Pinterest will publish this every year and they'll say like, see these things basically like we're the highest search volume. Also, Pinterest is in control of the search volume. So there's an element of like, it's a little bit skewed, but you do want to look for whenever you see those reports, go straight to your topic. So food and see what it is Pinterest is predicting will be popular in 2023 and try to create something around that. That could be a new way to get seen. If we know that Pinterest is pushing these particular keywords and topics, create something around that. I don't see any food in this. So I clicked on it. It's at the very bottom of Pinterest trend. Pinterest predicts, right? So yeah, I see mm-hmm. like no category for food in here. How often I, is this oh, updated? Interesting. There was one before. Well, it should be updated. Go to category. Okay. And it might be under no, food and beverage. So oh, if you click oh, on gotcha. filter trends, okay. yeah, then click on that and then it will go below there. <laughs> they are one of the funniest things for us every year is to see the pictures that they put in this because they feel kind of out of touch with reality. Like in fashion, there was a necklace sweater, like a sweater with no neck. And like oh. this person was walking around. Yeah, it's hilarious. <laughs> oh gosh, that's funny. Okay, so Pinterest trends, good to check out. I was going to ask you, this just came up about shuffles. Do you have any thoughts on shuffles and how that will grow maybe for foodie creators or not? You know, yeah, I got early access to shuffles, played around with it. And you know what I think it's best for is actually it's not a marketer tool yet. It's really great as a pinner tool. Granted, it's not a Pinterest. It's like a, a secondary app that Pinterest owns. But think of it as if you want to create a design board for redesigning your kitchen, or you would like to create a vision board with all the things on it. It's kind of, it's kind of like you have. Remember the collages we used to do as kids, where we yes, would tear that's exactly magazine? what it is. Yep. Yeah, totally. So there's really no way that we can see at this point. We've had some of our uh, students test it too, as well. There's no point in using it personally, but actually our social media manager, Tabby, is building a house and she is all over it. She's like, this is amazing because you can cut things out. It's literally like cutting things out when you have a magazine and putting it in there. So I would say play around with it if you want to for fun, but it's not a marketer tool yet. I can see potential. I hope it does become a marketer tool because I love that you can like like you said, you can cut things out as if you literally had scissors and were cutting around mm-hmm. them. And then when you tap on each image that you put on this like virtual poster board, it links directly to your Pinterest pin. Yes. Yes. I do like that. That could be pretty cool. Yeah. I would have to play around with it more in the food space to see how I could see design, photography, 
And if somebody was building like, like web design, if they were building stuff, and then it would lead to like a board where people put things together, like very collaborative. Or how about like a Thanksgiving meal? You're putting a meal together. You can include all of your components of the meal, maybe some design elements about your table. Or I don't know. Like there's so many creative people in this space. I can see somebody just taking this to a new level and just experimenting and having fun with it. It's so much fun. It is fun. I will say like, that's one of those things where when you see something new come out or even like there's, you know, when idea pins came out, there's a lot of pushback on like, I'm not using these. They don't link blah, 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 blah. But it's like, just play around with it. Like nobody ever said that you had to use it. Just get to know it. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. It's as simple as that. Be an early adopter. Mm -hmm. Why not? It might take off. Maybe not, but then you'll at least have a little bit of fun. You mentioned video a little bit earlier. Do you think it's still worthwhile to put video on Pinterest? Yeah, I do. A very short form video for sure. So that's one of those things where in the main home feed is you'll see these short form videos that come through. I'm looking at mine right now. And some people are, there was a big trend of TikToks going up over here. But I think the only reason that is, is because TikTok has some of that like, aha, I learned it on TikTok kind of thing, which Pinterest has that same element of hacky stuff. Like people like that. So if you have a short, less than 15 second video, for sure, we see it a lot with Pinterest ads. There's a big push with video Pinterest ads these days. So definitely test it and try it. It's an, basically another way that you can share your content yeah. that a video pin does still link to your website, it's a little bit harder to get to, but it still links. So would you say instead of like the old school, like hands and pans, here's how to create this recipe, throw in the flour. It's more just that catchy snippet of a video like we see on Instagram Mm -hmm. that people are liking on Pinterest as well. Yes, exactly. Anything that gets them like inspired to create something, especially if you have a quick and easy recipe, those are really doing well. If you have a long form recipe, I would turn that into more of an idea pin so that people can see if they want to connect with it. But doing like tons and tons of slides is not recommended. So you don't want to, you don't want to make it like 30 slides. That's too many. What is the ideal number of slides these days for idea pins? I have heard less than 10, uh, for sure less than 12, but five to seven is kind of a sweet spot. Okay, perfect. Um, What am I missing? Is there anything else about Pinterest that food bloggers need to know going into 2023? Well, actually, like one thing I would keep an eye on, I wouldn't necessarily think about pursuing it, but Pinterest TV is an interesting thing where it is produced by Pinterest. So you have to get an invite to do like a show with them. But I think there's some people have had good success with it when they do get the invite. A lot of more DIY content creators right now have, but just check it out. That's what there's some cooking shows over there too, as well. Just look at it on your phone and then see if it's something you'd be interested in. Is there still an application? I know for a while there was a form you could fill out that would kind of I don't know, speed the process along or something. We were talking about this on Clubhouse and a few creators on there had been invited, but they had filled out some like mysterious yes. form. <laughs> I remember that form going around. I'm not sure if it is, but you could probably Google Pinterest TV application and see if it pops up. I will say, actually, before you Google, Pinterest does have a new community, the Pinterest business community. We're actively involved in that. And one of the, they call them Pinterest pioneers, like one of the educators, teachers, but it is specifically for creators to get their questions answered by Pinterest. So one of the biggest complaints is that there hasn't been this good bridge between Pinterest and creators and creators really fuel the content for the pinners, which is who Pinterest serves. And so they created this forum and it's community. It's like a different URL community dot pinterest dot biz that's what it is okay when you go in there you're going to see something like a creator lounge there's articles there there's conversation so if you ever are curious about anything or maybe you have you're worried about a spam filter or being marked as spam or something's not working go here first 
because there's going to be a lot of people who can help troubleshoot and answer your question. Plus, there's a huge past archives of content that you can look through. And we work very closely with the two people, Pinterest Jasmine and Pinterest Gabby, as we call them. We work very closely with them to help curate and create this great environment for creators. And that's like, as being part of the Pinterest Pioneer Program, we give them feedback as to how to make this forum better. And it's so helpful. So I would tell people to go check that out. Awesome. That looks like a great resource. I'm just scrolling through here now. Some good topics covered. Mm -hmm. Um, So good to know about that. So with the Pinterest TV thing, you would say if it is a possibility for a food blogger to definitely take advantage of that and do a, I don't know what they call them, like call session, whatever. Yeah, absolutely. And go into the creator lounge that they have here this in the PBC and ask about Pinterest TV and see if there's any updates because they would have the latest and probably the quickest ac- access to the application. Okay. I did attend a few of my friends' sessions, the Pinterest TV sessions, and they were really good. I like that they keep them short and sweet. So they're like 30, mm-hmm. the ones that I watched were 30 minutes and they go through a recipe, talk through it, and they make the recipe. And a lot of people are there. I was so shocked. Yeah. There were over a thousand people on one of them. I was like, what? That's crazy. Totally. I saw that too. And I was like, oh my gosh. And so many people commenting and commenting like they have been there, like they're regulars. Yeah. And like, what, what's happening? But I think those are the things where when we're on our desktop all the time, there's no way for you to see Pinterest TV on desktop. So you would have to go. And now that I said that, I'm like, oh, wait. That's how it was before. (laughs) Let me check right now. But I do not believe that you can see it on desktop. I think you can only see it on mobile. I'm going to my home feed. There's a today tab too. You always want to click on that just to see what Pinterest is highlighting. But yeah, it's it's not there. I can't see it. So it's a little phone mobile gem. (laughs) A mobile gem. So make sure you get on your phone and look at it. Okay. I love how they put certain things just on mobile to make sure you're going on desktop and mobile and kind of using, Mm -hmm. utilizing all of their, the different ways to use the platform. Yeah. Yeah. What else do we need to know, Kate? Anything else that we've missed? Man, I feel like we covered a lot. I think maybe just less like anything that we've missed and more reiterating, like really looking at 2023 and I can't stress this enough. Like the people we see that have the longest success on Pinterest really are connected to why they're using it. And they're really focused on their end user. And they're willing to try new things. They're willing to step into experiments. But that's because they really are connected with their goals instead of chasing other people's success. Like that, that's an easy trap for us to get into in this industry. And I feel like social media is one of those things where we're, we're all looking for that golden ticket. We're still all looking to go viral and all these things. And it's kind of a slow and steady once the race when it comes to Pinterest. And so if you can really just know why you're using it, get connected with that, I think you'll be really successful in the long run. And embrace those changes like you said earlier, right? I think that is a huge mm-hmm. piece of it as well. Just knowing yeah. that it's going to change, it's going to evolve and nothing is ever going to stay the same. And just embracing mm-hmm. that, just give you peace of mind yeah. too and not, you know, take away the stress a little bit. Yes, 100%. Yes. Well, thank you, Kate. This was very enlightening and very fun to chat with you. So thank you so much for sharing all of your knowledge with us food bloggers today. It's been such a pleasure. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Do you have another quote or words of inspiration to leave us with today? I think my one last time was don't chase other people's success. That is still (laughs) still my mantra, but I do have a sticky note on my computer now that just reminds me of who I serve. And it just says like, who do you serve? My clients, my customers, my community and not other influencers. And I think that is a huge trap when we are looking in our online world. It's, it's easy for me. And I want to be transparent about that. It's easy for me to look at highlights and feel discouraged and remember that like, that's not my business. This is the business that I have. Oh, I love that. Why and who, right? Those are Mm -hmm. the focuses and the theme of our chat today. Uh, Tell everyone where they can find you. So mention your podcast and anywhere else you want to mention. Yeah. So we have Simple Pin Podcast. So you're in your podcast right now. Go hop over and subscribe to that. I think we're in the 300 episode range too. So we're both kind of on the same pace. 
And we just actually opened a shop, simplepinshop.com, where we have all of our products that you can buy, small products, courses, and past workshops. So if there's anything, we think people like to pick and choose a la carte what they're going to learn. So go check that out. It's our new our new baby we gave birth to. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, everyone go check it out. And thanks again, Kate, for being here. Thank you so much for listening today, food bloggers. I will see you in the next episode. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Eat Blog Talk. If you enjoyed this episode, I'd be so grateful if you posted it to your social media feed and stories. I will see you next time.